Hey, what is up everyone? Lord Pasta here, and I am finally doing KSP again. And this 1354 part behemoth is supposed to be a functional interplanetary SSTO. It can carry a payload of in excess of 120 tons to essentially anywhere reasonably close to Kerbin. Of course, this is after it refuels on Minmus, which is the only place that it is able to refuel after launching from Kerbin. This behemoth is on the edge of functional. It can make it into orbit, but only just barely. And it can land on Minmus and refuel, but again, only just barely. The point of this demonstration is really not to take this anywhere spectacular because of all the lag and just the immense amount of time that it takes to get this thing anywhere. The point of this demonstration is instead to demonstrate the possibility of going anywhere by landing on Minmus and refueling and assembling parts of the station that this thing carries in orbit around Minmus. Now this boy right here has got four different types of engines. One, the first type, would be the air breathing jet engines that are exclusively air breathing. Those things are only useful in an atmosphere and they're not sabers. Next, we've got the sabers, which are air breathing in atmosphere and can switch to rockets once outside of atmosphere. Then we got the last two. These would be the vectors and the nerves. When we've exited the thicker part of the atmosphere and we're actually trying to build speed to make a circularized orbit, I only use the nerves and the vector engines. However, pretty early on, I'm always going to run out of oxidizer, so those vector engines are going to be completely obsolete and I'm going to be flying completely on the nerves and I've got eight of them but the craft is still massive so it's gonna take us a while to build up enough speed to actually get a circularized orbit or even to get an apoapsis above the atmosphere this is what I meant when I said that it's barely functional now if there's one thing that this boy's got it's a bunch of liquid fuel and that's gonna come in handy with my nerves however it does come with that downside of taking forever to get anywhere so if we're going to be trying to make a rendezvous with some other body in the Kerbin system the Mun or Minmus we're going to have to be doing a lot of work and that's going to be taking a lot of time and so that's what all of these attempts to expand the orbit out slowly and slowly out to meet Minmus are doing that's the point of them and that's why they're taking so long now most of my previous cargo carrying interplanetary SSTO designs would always have a choice between landing on the Mun or Minmus because they had enough power to attain a landing on both without crashing however this model it's not a choice you can't land on the Mun because the nerves can't lift you up off of the Mun, its gravity is just too strong. So however fast you're going relative to the Mun, when you actually enter the influence of the Mun, is gonna be multiplied and not really reduced up until the point where you hit the actual surface of the Mun. So you're gonna crash every time. You have to go on Minmus, because at least on Minmus, just barely, the craft can actually lift off with those nerve engines. And when I say just barely, it is just barely. But that characterizes what we're looking for in a encounter with the influence of Minmus here, which is going to be a slow relative speed to Minmus as we're coming in. That way we can reasonably uh, reduce our speed and get down to a point where we have a controlled descent from very high up, which we're gonna need, so we can actually put this behemoth on the ground. Now the reason that I'm making my orbit very circular in order to match almost the circularity of Minmus is to reduce the relative speed at which I'm going to enter the sphere of influence of Minmus. In addition to this, I also burn multiple times, reducing my relative speed to Minmus to 
zero as I'm approaching Minmus while I'm in its sphere of influence for the same reason. Because there's so little power from these nerve engines, we need to be moving slowly and we need to burn off that excess speed that we are gaining by being in the sphere of influence of Minmus. If you don't do this, then you just crash. And I crashed a number of times in the production of this video. So many times that I had to cut all of them out of this time lapse because it would just get annoying. And that's part of the reason why it took me so long to do this, approximately a week uh, of doing this. The real issue was the lag. It was just far too slow. And because the aircraft, or just craft we could say, is so large, the SAS and even the RCS was so slow. Uh, and on top of the lag, on top of all of that, it just made everything so sluggish. Uh, especially when things like taking off of the surface of Minmus were causing the tips of the wings to be clipped off or the back of the wings to be clipped off or the whole thing to crash and so landing and taking off of Minmus were almost equally as difficult. Add that on to the whole problem of actually assembling the station itself which I did very poorly and I did not want to go back uh, and actually redo the whole thing. I was just done with it at that point. I just hope this does the job of explaining the general concept and the feasibility of something this large. This may in fact be pushing the limit of what's possible. I know that's not the case. I've seen people launch far larger ships that are SSTOs than this, but for me it might be pushing the limit. For any reasonable player of KSP it may be pushing the limit also. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this presentation and if you have any thoughts on how to make things bigger than this, any thoughts on what I did maybe wrong in the construction of this or the flight plan of this, then leave that in the comments down below. Uh, thank you for watching, thank you for giving this a view. Uh, go ahead, like and subscribe. I, anyways, I've been Lord Pasta and I will see you next time. Goodbye.